certainly know we're supposed to be doing them because you said somebody was asking about them. Somebody asked and for them without me ever knowing that. I'd already been thinking about it and, and thinking about doing something on these. Once every, we go into it. Every Thursday, you're going to have one of these up. Hmm. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. See, righteousness can be described as right thinking, right feeling, and right action. But that does not really give us a functional definition that we can relate to and understand. Righteousness is also the experience of the presence of God, the kingdom of heaven. In this state, everything is right, the way it should be. Even if things in our personal life are not the way they should be, but there is a feeling that this is correct in God's plan for our lives. You just know it. You just know it. May not look like it, but you know it. Boy, do I know it. Yeah. I just spoke with a lady who had just been fired from her job. She was experiencing the presence of God in her life, and being fired was not disrupting that experience. Quite the contrary, she was seeing being fired as a part of God's plan for her life. There was a sense that everything was right in her life. She was aware that she needed to get out and find another job, but the experience of being fired was not weighing her down. She subsequently found a temporary job that was right for her based on her experience and interest. The job also unexpectedly became permanent. Imagine that. Even though she had been fired, she was still connected to God. In fact, a desire to move deeper into the kingdom was stronger than ever. The steep desire for more of the kingdom is the hunger and thirst for righteousness. We, we begin our spiritual journey from a theoretical point of view. We believe there's something more to us than what we have come to believe in the past. We begin to believe that we too can experience the gifts of the Spirit on a spiritual journey. But the underlying drive for spiritual growth is often a feeling of emptiness, like something is missing. This too is a hunger and thirst for righteousness. But it is too early in the process to clearly identify what it is and where it is leading us. As we progress on our spiritual path, the hunger and thirst become stronger and easier to recognize. Once we are experiencing the kingdom of heaven on a more regular basis, we recognize the hunger and thirst as our desire for this closeness to God is 100% full conscious contact that Jesus Christ was experiencing. In the end, the hunger and thirst for righteousness is our desire to go home, back to the love and security of God from which we came. In the Gospel of Thomas, saying number 28, Jesus laments that people do not see that they came into the world empty and they seek to go out of the world as empty as well. None of them are thirsty. Now they are drunk, intoxicated by ego. When they have shaken off their wine, then they will repent. Jesus clearly sees that when people have shaken off the intoxicating effect of the ego, that they will repent. The word repent comes from a Greek word, metonia, which is spiritually related to the word metamorphosis, meaning reformation, transformation, and transfiguration. To repent is to change our mind, but to do so in a way that we are reformed transform and transfigure. The spiritual implications are clear. The emptiness we feel in life cannot be filled with possessions. No amount of wealth can fill the emptiness within the spirit. The ego tells us the answer is out there in the world and we go in search of happiness and fulfillment. But in the end, we come back to ourselves and ask, is this all there is to life? Just more things and more stuff. The answer is yes and no. Yes, 
Is this all the ego has to offer? More things? Yeah. And no. There is more. Much more. But only the spirit within can bring us into the more. Which is into the presence of God. By changing our awareness and consciousness from being ego-centered to being spirit-centered, we have reformed our thinking and entered upon the path of transformation that leads to transfiguration. In this process, the emptiness of the soul is filled with the presence of God. The spirit within experiences his fulfillment and we become whole and complete. We awaken and come into our own as a spiritual being standing fully and completely in the kingdom of heaven.